Okay, next one up, transient hypofrontality, which basically means knocking out your prefrontal cortex and your limbic system. In other words, you're shutting down your cheering monkey as well as your baby Yoda. As I imagine it, it's like I'm putting them on the sort of the, the sidelines and I awaken this, this inner titan, so to say, and the inner titan is behind the wheel. It's a different state of being. You are more alert, more aware, and time flows differently in this flow. This is also one of the characteristics that you will see later, that when you are in flow, time moves differently. Okay, so transient means temporary. So luckily for the monkey and luckily for the Yoda, they can play later. Hypo is below normal or reduced, and frontality is the frontal cortex. So in this case, uh, Baby Yoda, the decision maker, or in other, other words, the, the voice that you keep hearing, shove to the sideline. So it's all about um, reducing brain activity. So in other words, removing the you out of the equation where you become therefore more engaged with whatever you're doing and you can connect better with your environment so you're reducing the, the the mental layer the ego so to say i've discussed this before this is a concept where this person has a brain uh, which we call sort of you this you is a fog that's between the energy of the outside world and the energy that you already have inside. This is a layer how you interpret it, whatever is happening outside to inside. If you reduce this layer, this energy inside can connect better with this outside. So it's basically, basically sort of an ego destruction. It is creating less you and therefore more energy opens up to connect with your surrounding. That's what it does with transient hip hypofrontality. We've got all these additional clips after these uh, after these short videos, which explains how it works, uh, shows you the research. But in short, it it ups your creativity as well. No, it enters. It allows you to enter the flow state, so you can do things that you normally that Jordi could not do, but Floaty can do. Um, so things you can do this naturally. Uh, I just talked with somebody who described the flow state. And when walking on the beach, for example, when you combine the action of your brain while movement, while also having a crystal clear view of a surrounding that you really love, in this case the sea, it, activ it activates a certain state where you reduce brain activity and you increase this, this piece of serenity, so to say. But you can also do this uh, mechanically, or how do you say it, uh, artificial. For example, via meditation techniques, daydreaming techniques, or certain athletic activities, uh, where you really push the body. So when your body is really pushed hard, trust me, when your heart is in your throat, uh, the voice inside your head <laughs> dials down. It's all about surviving in that case. And uh, you become way, way more alert. In other words, if you are on the a good way to push yourself into the flow state, to reach this transient hypofrontality, is to increase uh, a certain amount of risk or in this case, um, reach more towards your limits, so to say. So if you are more towards your limits, the pressure rises, uh, you're getting outside your comfort zone, so to say, and it's a very convenient way to activate this, uh, this technique. Often seen, by the way, uh, with surfers, skiers, uh, playing po high stakes poker for that matter, um, it's easier to get into the flow. Okay, so that's a wrap for the hypofrontality. Um, so engaging activities like meditation and mindfulness, etc., to increase your hypofrontality, to reduce the ego, therefore allowing the energy to connect better. Uh, definitely do a lot of daydreaming, but don't rely solely on daydreaming, of course. There are more techniques in different ways, different perspectives on how to activate this. Never ever forget that it's not easy, but everybody can access this higher states. Um, it's called lifelong learning for a reason. It's basically practicing, practicing, practicing. Uh, fake it until you become it. That's sort of the trick over here. It will be awkward in the beginning. You will get a lot of pushback from your, uh, the voices inside your head. Especially I, I was quite uh, fearful in the beginning. I did not realize why. 
I didn't want to do breathing exercises because I didn't believe in them. I didn't want to do the yoga. I didn't want to do the mindfulness exercises. Especially stayed away from all these uh, Indian sounding techniques. I thought it was only for hippies, etc. But uh, gradually when I confronted these fears myself, there is actually um, a lot of value in it. So I highly recommend to see them as heads or to see them as Lego blocks. Pick out the ones that you like but at least pick them up a few times so that you can actually see and experience it yourself and experience it as well as your body, mind, heart, soul. Not only trust blindly this brain inside of your head that is thinking shorter. Once again, this is sort of like an, sort of like an overcaring mother. Yes, this is definitely a convenient strategy when, for example, you were about to face a tiger, heads on, all alone, but on the long term, um, it's good to make mistakes, it's good to learn, it's good to grow. And this overcaring mother might be intervening with this, with the process. So have a good conversation with, uh, with the inner voices and start doing this. Uh, lock it in as discussed. And uh, I will see you in next part where we're going to discuss the characteristics of flow. Uh, so how to recognize it.